Hi, this is a robotic rat hepatectomy for colorectal liver metastases in a young female, 40-year-old female who was diagnosed with rectal cancer, and she had multiple liver mats. There were four in the right lobe and one in the left segment. Patient underwent chemotherapy. This is pre-chemo. Uh, pre Patient underwent chemo and all the tumors shrunk, but they were still persistent. She also had MRI that didn't show any other lesions. I consented the patient for a robotic right hepatectomy and wedge ablation, wedge resection of the left lateral segment tumor. This is intra-op. Liver was definitely looked like chemo liver, although she only had four cycles of chemotherapy. You can see the tiny tumor there in the left lateral segment. The liver definitely looked uglier than what I was ex hoping for. Started here with cholecystectomy, standard, dissecting cystic duct and artery, critical view of safety. I divided the cystic duct and I placed a tie on the cystic duct stump for the assistant to later pull on it. Gallbladder was completely removed. Afterwards started the hilar dissection. Here placed umbilical tape around the hilum for Pringle maneuver. I'm still testing the best uh, way to do a Pringle maneuver here. I used a uh, 20 French chest tube, which I exteriorized directly through the skin without using a port in the left upper quadrant. That worked really well during the case. It retracted the hilum inferiorly and to the left side. And it was also convenient for the assistant to do intermittent Pringle maneuver as needed. Doing liver ultrasound, looking for the lesions. There's uh, that w prominent one in segment eight. So that was two centimeter away from the middle hepatic vein. So I really needed to stay close to the hep middle hepatic vein in the upper part of the dissection. You can see the course of the middle hepatic vein. I marked it on the surface of the liver under ultrasound guidance. Here, starting the hilar dissection, the assistant helps by pulling the cystic stump to the left. Finding the, this is the right hepatic artery there, and you can see the bifurcation. Actually, you can see the stump of the cystic artery there. I divided it close to the artery. This lymph node was in the way, so I took it out and sent it. Also tied the proximal artery because also I want the assistant to pull on it for the portal vein dissection. Now the assistant pulling both the cystic duct and the hepatic artery. Here I decided to dissect the anterior and posterior separately and clip both of them and divided the artery which gave me a great view of the portal vein. I mean, this view, I did the same case next day open. This view is definitely better robotic than open. You, you can reach all the way in there and see. You can see there, there is a big segment six vein, just as the CT shows. And then there is like a trifurcation anatomy or the anterior and the posterior, they come out very close. Here you can see the left portal vein and you can see the portal vein bifurcation there. working around them to try to isolate the individual branches. Trying to stay distal, you can see the caudate branch. You're going to see the caudate branch there in a second, trying to stay distal to the branch. 
Again, with the robot, you can see under the vein there very nicely, all the way to the other side. I like the Maryland like tear and bipolar. So here I was able to get around the whole right sided trunk. My first plan was to individually tie the segment six, anterior and posterior vein. But then I realized that was going to be time consuming and its stapling appeared to be the way to go. It did not seem that it would narrow the left portal vein. White load staple here. Staying away from the bifurcation, pushing towards the liver. The tie is very useful in this situation. The vein was divided and now I want to mobilize the liver off the retroperitoneum and off the IVC and divide the short hepatic veins. I think this maneuver is very helpful if it's done before the parenchymal transaction. And with the robot, it's easily doable. Again, you can see nicely under the liver there. The small branches I took with the vessel sealer. The third arm is very essential to pull on the liver. A huge right lobe, as you can see. But with the robot and with the articulating instruments, you can reach all the way in there. I want to try to get as much of this lateral and retroperitoneal dissection as possible. Getting close, not necessarily around, but close to the right hepatic vein. Went back here to the short hepatic veins. Took some of the smaller ones with the vessel sealer, the, like that one, big one, I tied and clipped it. Here I got all the way up to the cable ligament and I divided that with the vessel sealer in this situation. And that for me was a good end point for this dissection. Here I divided the caudate lobe. used harmonic and vessel sealer here. Just divide all the caudate lobe tissue under the hyalur plate on the right side. Here I went anteriorly, took down some of the falciform. I just wanted to identify the origin of the right, of the right and middle hepatic veins just to orient me during the parenchymal transaction. Again, with the robot articulating hook, you can easily reach there. You can see the right hepatic vein origin right there. Here with the ICG and you can see the demarc line of demarcation. In the upper liver there, I wanted to stay closer to the right hepatic vein, so I went into the line of demarcation a little bit to get a good margin. You can see the right hepatic vein course marked with continuous cautery to the right of the screen.
Again, checking with ultrasound again, marking where the edge of the tumor is to make sure I stay away from it. Again, the course of the middle hepatic vein. Here, parenchymal suture, this is 3 proline SH needle. I think on the right side, this is very helpful for the assistant to pull on it. On the left side, it was not necessary as I was actively pulling with my third arm. So probably I won't be placing on both sides, just on the right side. Connected to vessel loop, so when the assistant pulls on it, it doesn't tear through the liver. It has some elasticity. Have the assistant pull it through the lateral wall with uh, Carla Thompson. Here I did place on the other side, but I'm saying I probably won't need that. As you'll see how my third arm was doing a lot of the retraction on the left side. Here started the parenchymal transaction. I love the harmonic for the superficial tissue. I would do the whole parenchymal transaction with harmonic. The only problem that it does not articulate. And here we applied Pringle maneuver. I applied it here just for conditioning for a few minutes. We did not encounter any bleeding yet. Again, you can see the harmonic is doing a great job. And as you can see with the pneumoperitoneum and the Pringle maneuver, there is no bleeding. If someone, artic if someone invents articulating harmonic, that would be a winner. Here, starting to see middle hepatic vein coming into view there, the distal part of it. Some clamp crush with my left hand with the bipolar. And using the hot blade on the harmonic to basically dissect the tissue. I tried to manipulate the line of transaction so it falls in line with the harmonic as the harmonic itself cannot articulate. But it's really a nice dissection with the ultrasonic device. A little bit of hemostasis with monopolar. Here I swear I couldn't reach and again with the with the harmonic, so I switched to clamp crush with the Maryland, and I think it did a good job. But there was a lot of accumulation of char on it. Here, middle hepatic vein branches to segment five. Taken with Hemolox. I think I have the main crossing vein down below, and there's a hole in it, so I'm holding it with my left hand, trying to dissect with clamp crush around the vein. You can see that big hole there in the vein. I clipped it. As you can see, there is no bleeding even with an open vein with a normal peritoneum. I used air seal here to keep up with the continuous suctioning that the assistant is providing. Here I moved the harmonic to my left hand, although I'm not left-handed, because I just like how it, at least for the superficial liver, that was more in line with the transaction line using the left hand. Trying to stay away from the actual vein, but away also from the tumor there. Also really nice with the hot blade, it's really nice to dissect tissue away. Went back to clamp and crush here with the Maryland. I really tried different, as you can see, I tried all kinds of different instruments for that parenchymal transaction. I think the instrument that would be best would be Synchroseal. Currently, I don't have it. I'm trying to acquire the instrument. 
but I think it will be the perfect instrument for parenchymal trisection as it does bipolar you can do clamp and crush with it and it has a lower profile than the regular vessel sealer here another crossing branch here I switched to the vessel sealer the vessel sealer really did a great job clamp crush and I was hitting the bipolar as I was clamp and crushing so that maintained hemostasis in liver parenchyma. Again, I think the synchroseal will be like the vessel here, but even better because it has smaller profile. Try to keep straight line of transaction. really dividing with the vessel sealer and applying energy as I closed and clamp crush technique there was essentially no bleeding here dividing the bile duct and block with surrounding tissue you can see dividing the caudate lobe helps a lot as now it's straight shot for a vascular stapler across the bile duct and surrounding tissue continued caudal approach basically the third arm was very helpful uh, if I would be doing superficial division I would pull the liver down and if I'm working on the deep liver I would pull the liver up with my third arm and that really provided this open book approach and this excellent exposure And also what's nice with the vessel sealer, really, the dissection was relatively very fast. I think we applied Pringle maneuver once during the parenchymal transaction. The other benefit of the synchro seal is that it divides and does bipolar at the same time. Here we had a little hole on the and a hepatic vein branch on the remnant side so I sutured it I have those bleeding sutures again from my Whipple operations for oproline I have SH this is SH needle SH RB1 needles as needed they have a hemolock at the end so I don't need to tie a knot then I place another hemolock and I'm done most of the time my my left hand is actually holding the bleeder so I don't really have the luxury of tying a knot so these come very handy back to the parenchymal transaction again with the vessel sealer doing a good job some oozing here and there but honestly much better than open looking for segment 8 hepatic vein branches up there Here we are off the IVC and we had some bleeding from the right hepatic vein so we just stapled as long as we are off the IVC. So this was basically the right hepatic vein with the surrounding tissue. Last bit of tissue there. And the specimen was completely detached. The remnant looks relatively dry. I mean, definitely there was some oozing and bleeding, which is magnified on the robot. When we finished, there was less than 200 cc in the canister including the irrigation
final hemostatic touches here, suction, irrigation, test seal spray. And that was it. The uh, console time was four hours, including actually a wedge resection of the left lateral segment, which I didn't include here. It was straightforward. This is the final view. It's really a great case to be done on the robot. This is the pathology four tumors in the right lobe and all the margins are negative. Thank you for watching.